All right, got some new motors for the Orca. All right, so um, you probably probably haven't seen the full completed video of this build series yet, but um, I wanted to get some more powerful motors. I mean, that was the goal the whole time was just to get the thing up and running, and then upgrade to some higher end motors. Um, it's all these for a while. Um, I didn't know if I was going to do these or like the 60 millimeter, like a 2.1 amp. Um, these are actually pretty expensive, you know, compared to those ones. Like the cheaper, cheaper, like stepper online versions of the 60 millimeter. But these are, I guess, supposedly high end. They're about 30 bucks a piece on Amazon. So they are considered, they're called the LDO. Uh, they're the 2.8 amp 42 millimeter. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, these supposedly can put out more power or can handle more amperage than the 60 millimeter. I mean, they're probably not going to have the same holding torque. We'll, we'll go over the specs. I'll go on uh, my, my computer. We'll go over the specs. We'll look at them. Meant 3D but, printer. But right now, I'm just running some like 37 millimeter, the stock ones. Some stock ones that came off my solar printer. But yeah, my goal for this printer was, was high speed. So, so I wanted some uh, higher end motors that could actually handle the extra uh, current and also the um, you know, higher voltage. Yeah, you can feel good. The magnets feel pretty good. So I wonder how they're able to achieve such higher higher amperage, higher current rating in a smaller motor you know, with the windings. So they're called the, uh, the HT, the high power, or super power, super power HT. Here's a cheaper yeah. little uh, 42, millimeter, 42 millimeter motor. And uh, one of the things I do actually like is that there's no brake. Yeah, it's a headache when you have to change the motor out. You know, because you don't have this easy little connector right here. But yeah, so when you're setting a lot of current, um, these connectors will heat up and they create a lot of resistance. So if you can avoid those connectors, I mean, you're going to have uh, better results for sure, no doubt. Um, all right, so I got to get these installed. Um, and, I mean, I'm not going to be doing some any stress tests. I'm just going to test them. We'll do a test print and see how they work. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of still on the fence about these things, you know, if I want to go 60 milliliters. I don't know. These, they said these are 30 bucks each. So they're a lot more expensive than your typical NEMA 17. One thing you're not going to be able to tell, uh, you know, in this video is that when I turn this right, these magnets feel so much stronger. You can really feel the clicks, you know, between the poles. Yeah, that feels really good, tight. Whereas, like this cheapo one, it's basically almost it's easy to turn. Whereas this feels very tactile. Click, 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 click it. You know, it's feels very nice. So what's funny is I was thinking about maybe returning these, but once I felt that, I was like, oh man, that's, that's, that feels good. Yeah, when you can feel that much magnet, you know you're going to have a lot of holding torque. So maybe before I put these on, I might want to figure out a heat sink solution. Um, I bought a bunch of these uh, Japanese uh, Sanyo Denki steppers, but they were the wrong shaft. They were four millimeter shaft. It wasn't long enough. But it's thirty-five dollars for five. It has like a dampener here, but I actually I liked it because I had the heat sink in the back. So um, um, I'm still going to use these things, just not. I might do on the on the four four uh, four corner bed leveling. Um, all right, so so now I'm brainstorming. <laughs> and I make some annoying videos. Um, so maybe what would be cool is to maybe get a block of aluminum and maybe like machine out the center and like create some rivets. Alright, so let me show you guys some ideas on how to keep these things cool. Um, I designed this yesterday. It's a heat sink um, that attaches to the back of the motor. Yeah, just because the, the amount of current that I want to give these things is definitely going to generate some heat because they got slightly warm at about 1 amp. So... Um, also, I might redesign my uh, brackets, um, the motor brackets, and machine these out of aluminum. So originally when I designed these, these were designed for a 3D printer, um, because these would be very difficult to machine, um, really just because of the square holes here for the, to mount the 2020 rail. Um, I guess I could delete the 2020 rail if I didn't, if they were made out of aluminum, but 
you know, trying to cut a square hole out of it with a round bit is nearly impossible. You need a broach, something like that, maybe, if that's even doable. So I might, I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of leaning towards this idea because um, the this whole thing will act as a heat sink. It'll draw heat up from the motor, but also the the the, the whole frame rail will act as a heat sink as well. So. I mean, I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing because of a thermal expansion. So as all of a sudden, as you're drawing heat into the frame of the printer, you're going to be expanding the expanding the uh, the printer. So don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, or if I should just basically keep these plastic brackets and run that thing. So either or, I'm thinking about it. But what would be cool is maybe add some cooling fins, like add cooling fins all around the, all on the part. I'd have to get rid of this right here, these these parts and. I'd have a still have, I, th I think I still want a 2020 rail crossover, just for the extra extra rigidity. I could make this shorter, so only two holes. Um, that would actually be a pretty big chunk of aluminum to machine out. All right, got them installed. So I'm going to go in a clipper and increase the current about one amp. I'm not going to push them. Uh, I'm just going to test them, see if they work. Um, just because I don't want to overheat them, I don't want to max them out until I get some heat sinks on here. Uh, I'll go into uh, on my computer on Infusion 360 and I'll show you. I've already designed the heat sinks. It's got to mill them out now. These got to go by the material, aluminum, and uh, mill them out. But I guess you could do water cooling too. But all right, so I'm still using my uh, Pico board, but I do actually have a Monster 8 that I've with 2240 drivers. Um, I can't see it shaking, but I'm doing a resonance test right now. So once that's done, I'm going to do a Z-tilt, and I think I'm going to do an air calibration cube at 200 uh, millimeters a second. Because right now I'm doing, my test one is 120. Um, like I said, I increase the amperage to, the current to one, one amp. Alright, so that's um, 200, 200 millimeters per second. Um, Alright, let's see if this thing, uh, see how hot these motors get at one amp. decided to redesign these uh, back motor mounts. Um, obviously this is going to be aluminum because you wouldn't need cooling fins on plastic. Um, so the idea was to draw as much heat up through the top of the motor and dissipate it through the chunky aluminum back here. Um, I could do like an active cooling fan back here, you know, or create something back here, but I don't know if that's necessary. And one of the reasons why I'm taking all this precaution is I have some 5160 Pro external steppers in here, high voltage steppers, or the stepper drivers um, from Big Tree Tech coming in. So uh, I want to get this whole thing prepared before those come in um, because I'm going to be sending these things at higher higher voltage and uh, higher current. So um, yeah, because I've actually, when, when sometimes when I'm, in the past when you overheat a stepper motor, at least from my own experience, is that it'll start losing steps and it'll start locking up and it will, uh, it'll just behave kind of oddly. Um, all right, so, all right, so in the next probably week or two, I'll be machining these things on my most likely my CNC router um, because that makes them less of a mess because I have a, I have a water, I have a water table and containment system. Um, plus, it's twenty four thousand RPM spindle, and you want higher RPM for aluminum gives it a better surface quality um, whereas my other mill is slower I think the max is like 3000 rpm on that thing all right cool all right having fun so can't wait for those things to show up the 5160s so I can drive these to the max so yeah my goal is just super high speed so all right guys cool yeah.